if you're an Oklahoma fan and you needed a reason to be excited on a Friday morning, you definitely got it because DeMarco Murray and the Oklahoma Sooners have landed a five-star running back according to the 247 composite rankings. And it's something Oklahoma hasn't done since Joe Mixon. I think it's been almost 10 years. And this is now Oklahoma's highest rated commit in the class of 2024. And right now, Oklahoma, they're moving up. And it doesn't look like they're going to be slowing down anytime soon because there's more commitments coming down in the next couple days. But before we talk about it, before we dive into it, guys, I got to hear from you. So jump down in the comments below. Let me know what y'all's thoughts are about the addition of Taylor Tatum, not only to the football program, but to Skip Johnson and the baseball program as well. What are your thoughts? What are your feelings? I want to hear from you guys. Also, hit the like and the subscribe button. See, y'all thought I was going to forget. But the five-star running back, Taylor Tatum, has committed to the University of Oklahoma over the likes of USC and Lincoln Riley. Yeah, you heard me right. The same Lincoln Riley who supposedly is just this great all-quarterback, offensive whisperer, gets all of the top-rated guys, but really couldn't land a five-star running back at Oklahoma and, uh, yeah, couldn't land one at USC either. Taylor Tatum ends up picking the University of Oklahoma over USC, but had offers from Alabama, or Auburn, and about 36 other schools. So if you're Oklahoma, you went out there and you beat out some other elite schools for just an elite running back. So it makes you feel good. Makes you feel good to not lose a five-star running back to Alabama once again. But when you look at what Taylor Tatum is and what he brings to the Oklahoma, he's just the top running back, right? He's a guy that really can do it all. He's a utility knife at this one. He's can do it on first down, he can do it on second down, and he can do it on third down for you. And not to mention, being a dual sport athlete, you're still seeing this trend with Venables and this staff where they want to get guys that they can play multiple positions or they can play multiple sports because it makes them versatile. And the elusiveness of Taylor Tatum is unmatched in this class. And there's a reason why Taylor Tatum is the best because when you have to go down the boxes and you have to check them off, Taylor Tatum literally checks every single box. And while he might not blow you away with size and he might not blow you away with speed, Taylor Tatum, like I said, by checking every box, he gets you there. But he competes in baseball and track and field. If you notice, Oklahoma is really going after running backs that do track and field as well because Kane Durham's another guy that competes in track and field. And you imagine a running back room in 2024 where it's Taylor Tatum, Caden Durham, and Xavier Robinson, along with what you already have there, understanding there probably will be a transfer portal entrance or two because – you can't just hold this many running backs and not have one into the transfer portal. But Oklahoma's running back room, even with a transfer portal entrance, would still be probably one of the best, if not the best running back room in the entire country when Oklahoma heads into the SEC. And so you look at what Taylor Tatum has been able to do just on the field in high school. 227 rush attempts, 2,629 rushing yards, 39 rushing touchdowns, 18 receptions, 245 receiving yards, and six receiving touchdowns. So you see right here that Taylor Tatum is not only a guy that can just run it through the middle, pound the ball, but Taylor Tatum is a guy that can catch the ball out of the backfield and he can make defenders miss a little bit. So Taylor Tatum officially visits Oklahoma for the champion barbecue you saw the predictions flow in after that. It seemed like Skip Johnson was a big piece here for DeMarco Murray and Oklahoma and Jeff Levy to be able to go out here and land the five-star running back out of Longview, Texas. But this is big because the narrative was Lincoln Riley leaves Oklahoma. Oklahoma's dead. Oklahoma now lands a five-star running back over that same USC program that Lincoln Riley is at now. And mind you, this is the same Oklahoma program that finished better in the recruiting rankings in 2023 than USC did in 2023. So 
from all indications, Oklahoma's not dead. Oklahoma's not going anywhere. And Oklahoma's still going to be winning recruiting battles over the likes of Lincoln Riley and USC. Now, we look at some of the other recruitments that are coming up this week outside of Taylor Tatum. And you've got Michael Patterson on the 31st, which I think a lot of people expect to be Oklahoma. I expect Oklahoma as well. We've had him here on the podcast, and we will be having a an interview with him for his commitment. So keep an eye on that one. He'll be committing, but we'll be doing a uh, post-commitment interview with him, if that makes sense to y'all. Uh, so we're not. I'm not sure when that's going to drop, if it'll drop right after he commits or if it'll drop uh, the day after, but we'll have that for you guys uh, ready to go and load it up. And then you have Sooners Under the Stars and you have Party at the Palace. And between those two events, I would say I expect Oklahoma to get anywhere between maybe one to two guys for 2025, two to three for 2023. And if you're Oklahoma, you still got a lot of targets on the board. What I mean by that is you've got Eugene Brooks setting his commitment date for July 25th. That's going to be an Oklahoma and Texas battle Red River rivalry in the recruiting space where Texas has kind of beat Oklahoma on several offensive linemen battles. Doesn't look like they're going to beat us this time. And Oklahoma's getting a really good player in Eugene Brooks. I like him. I like the upside that Eugene Brooks has. Not to mention... You're still waiting on a commitment announcement from Grant Bricks, who, by all indications, it sounds like he's going to be a Sooner. But it also sounds like Nebraska and K-State, they have just as good of a shot as Oklahoma. And sounds like the relationship with Grant Bricks, Bill Biedenboe, Jerry Schmidt, it's there. But this is going to be one that Oklahoma's got to fight out to the end. And then you just look at some of the other guys that Oklahoma's waiting on, like a Michael Boganowski, uh, Josh Isosa, who actually has his commitment date set for August. You have Andy Bass, the three-star AF athlete. Oklahoma's got guys that they're just waiting on. And the dominoes are going to keep falling because you've still got five-star defensive lineman David Stone, five-star defensive lineman Williams Winery. You have five-star defensive lineman Dominic McKinley, who... My goodness, if he shows up to the party at the Palace, Oklahoma fans are just going to become unbearable on Twitter, especially if we don't have a commitment from a David Stoner or Williams Winery by that time, uh, which it sounds like Williams Winery might be August 1st. Yeah, Oklahoma recruiting is fun right now. And although y'all were freaking out a couple months ago, I don't think there's any room to be freaking out at the moment. But guys, I want to hear from you about the recent commitment of the five-star running back, Taylor Tatum, and what you guys think this means for the program and for the University of Oklahoma. It's a big one. Oklahoma hasn't had a five-star running back commit to them in a while, since Joe Mixon, which I think I said was 2016. So I want to hear from you guys. Jump down in the comments below. If you haven't already, hit the like and hit the subscribe button.